Smashing grabs, shoplifting sprees, widespread vandalism. Business owners across the country right now fed up with the rise in crime and are now forced to take matters into their own hands and ramp up security with private companies or private details or risk losing their businesses altogether. Joining us right now, John Katsimatidis, CEO of Gristiti Supermarkets. John, good morning and welcome to the National Desk. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Where you are in New York is one of the hardest hit areas when it comes to retail crime. And I heard that you had to hire some retired NYPD officers as additional security guards. How much of an increase have you seen in shoplifting over this past year? And why do you think it's gone up so much? I think it's over 50 percent uh, because of the new bail law that has gone through in, in the state. And, uh, you know, when people steal they and they're hungry, we understand that they steal uh, some uh, uh, tuna fish or they steal some um, bologna or salami with, with with bread. But this is not that. This is professional uh, grab and, and and they're grabbing it and they're professionally stealing it and they're reselling it. So they're doing this as a systematic pattern and they're doing this as it's organized crime. Uh, they, they steal two, three hundred dollars at a time uh, and uh, they go and resell it to someplace else. There's, there's people that are buying it from them, uh, and uh, maybe they're even selling it to the bodegas, the so-called small stores in New York City. Uh, and uh, and we asked the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, to differentiate between the uh, professional uh, uh, shoplifters and the people that are just hungry. But bottom and, line, uh, I, I think that uh, that's very important that they, you do that. Bottom and line, also, though, a fifty percent spike in shoplifting, though. What impact has this had on your business specifically? Have you had to raise prices as a result? Fifty percent is very significant. What changes have you had to make as a result? We had we, we had hired additional security people. We hired people inside the the stores as security people. We hired people outside the stores watching the people. What what the result is in New York? Uh, Rite Aid is closed, the load of stores, uh, CVS is closing stores uh, because they're, they're just wiping out the shelves. They, they come in with uh, garbage bags, load up the whole uh, garbage bag and leave with three, four, five hundred dollars worth of stuff. And uh, the, the, uh, those kind of stores, they can't take that kind of uh, abuse. Uh, and uh, uh, how, how do we want to say it in the movies? We're mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I am I called upon the politicians that you got to do something. There's, this is not, we're going to change the name of New York City uh, from New York City to Dodge City. I mean, it, it's just, it's getting out of hand. And the people in the state, Albany, uh, the state capital, they have to put their foot down and realize that it's wrong, that I understand on minor crimes, but when there's crimes to that extent, when there's professional organized crimes against the storekeepers, then that's wrong and something has to be done about it. And you mentioned you talked with Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan District Attorney there. I want you to take a listen to what he had to say recently. You have amongst us opportunists who are repeat players who are just taking goods. Uh, and so we are brainstorming about how to respond to that as well and how to meet that moment, thinking about things of people who are uh, really you know, going from store to store uh, and just taking. Uh, and how we can kind of aggregate that conduct um, and so charge it at a higher level where appropriate. What was your meeting like with him? Do you feel he's like... He's a very nice man. Okay. And he means well, but he's not street smart. I mean, what, what you got to do, uh, if these people, at what point do you, do you put them in jail and leave them there? At, after they have five crimes, 10 crimes, 15 crimes, you know, there's a point. You draw the line. And that, that's bottom line. It doesn't take smarts. You don't have to have, uh, you know, a 200 IQ to, to, to realize that. The, uh, uh, once is a career criminal, get him off the streets, put him in jail, and leave him there until he learns his lesson. And if, it, and if there's a repeat crime, leave him there longer. That's the only way you're going to have our streets uh, uh, safe. And what I've said to people is we have licked COVID now. Uh, and, and COVID is gone. Right now, we have to go and take care of crime in the streets. And that's the only way New York City will become the greatest city in the world again. John, I want to ask you very quickly about your new mayor, because he does have law enforcement background. Is he going to be able to get some law and order back to the city? Well, 
uh, he I, he has told everybody he wants to do it. I have confidence in him that he wants to do it. But he went to Albany on a meeting, and the Albany legislators, the capital of, of, of New York State is Albany. The Albany legislators told him to pound sand. So what does that mean? Well, there's an election year in November. I'm I'm going to organize and tell everybody that uh, if they don't do something about it, then November is the time to take put our foot down and get get them reelected. John Katzmatidis, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate you joining us. Best of luck to you, sir. Hope we can talk to you again. Thank you so much. Bye. -bye.